When I think of mountain biking, these peaks are the sort of thing that I imagine. So here we find ourselves for the third round of the Enduro World Series in the French Alps, the quintessential home of Enduro, the place where it all started. As with all the Enduro World Series, we have a variety of formats. This time we have two days racing, and on each day we have three stages. The first stage is raced on first track, and then the second two stages are raced on the same track. Riders are just given one practice run before racing each course, and so this is really it. They don't know exactly where they're going. They're feeling the way down the mountain, exactly as you would if you were out riding your bike on a stage on a mountain like this. We're on the first section here of the stage one and you can see just jagged rocks behind us. The trail kind of comes down through them. It's just absolutely amazing at the top of here. And then we can see it drops down below us and it turns into some big plains. You can see where the ski pieces normally are. So I think it's going to be picking up some serious pace. And this track is incredible. We're just coming down through the trees now. We've had the sort of out in the meadows, but this is just fresh cut track down through these bracken and grasses and everything. This is what, when I got into mountain biking, downhill was all about. been flying down these hills like a creamy laser past the little houses and chalets at the side of it. Now we've got to go, well, I've got to get through these cows that are blocking the track at the moment. This really is proper alpine alpine. We're down in the town of Valois, beautiful mountains surrounding us, stream thundering down alongside us. And there's a brewery here that I've heard has got a connection to the enduro racing in this area. So a brewery, connection to the racing, is there any more reason needed to have to pop in? So uh, first things first, I think, um, pick up one of these. Student bartenders, where's the main man? So, so what are you doing here? I see we've uh, got some Enduro World Series beer. Yeah, so you know we are in Valois, and Valois is, I think, very famous for, for its tracks. For 10 years now, we organize Enduro Series. I'm very happy to, to have you here and uh, just to test this local production. I think it's a very good quality local production. And I've heard some amazing stories about the riding around here. We've seen uh, Chris Ball man you're very closely involved in with the Enduro World Series saying he absolutely loves the riding around here. What can we expect this weekend? Honestly I'm uh, very confident about what you are going to, to see and uh, what riders are going to, to race this weekend. It uh, will be a hard weekend and same time very very fun weekend. So we're joined by Nico. Um, we haven't seen you at the first two rounds. Can you tell us what the story was and why you've not been here? Yeah, just uh, uh, injured since August last year uh, in Whistler. I broke my uh, scaphoid and uh, and I had some bad knees, so I 
I said, okay, let's go <laughs> and do it. So I did one in September. And when I uh, came back on my mountain bike in uh, January, I had a stupid crash and broke my over knees. So uh, crazy uh, stories, but just I had uh, yeah, two uh, knee operations in February. So one in September, one in February. So yeah, just my first race of the year since 10 months. It's good, excited to be here, yeah. Brilliant, so it's great to have you back here. And this venue, Valois, uh, have you raced here before? Because it's obviously in your home country. Um, do you know any of the tracks? What can we expect over the weekend? Yeah, yeah, I, I raced here in 2006, so many years ago, but it was already an uh, enduro series. And I had the good, good fun. Yeah, there is a lot of, uh, yeah, lot of uh, downhill section. It's, it's, yeah, the way it's more like uh, old downhill track, you know, a lot of grass, of camber and, and woods. I don't know, I walked today a bit, it was quite steep, quite, uh, but I think it will be a good race. It's 8.30 Saturday morning, we've got early lift up, first doors, and now we're at the top of the mountain. Got all the riders gathering behind us, they're going to get one practice run now, and then we're going to catch them on their race runs. Ennis, you're just about to have your first uh, training run on this course. What are you expecting? I'm not really sure what to expect. Like It's such a great landscape here. I'm expecting to be fast, I think, the track. Rocky, for sure. Yeah. So Completely, uh, yeah, new first time we've been up here. I, didn't, I chose not to walk anything yesterday as well because I'm not really a, a mountain walker very often and I knew it with my legs pretty sore. So, yeah, first, first you, first glance at the track, but I quite like this format. I think it's, it keeps it exciting. New second at the first stage, it was a Good one for start, very technical and physical at the, at the end. Okay, so we've just had the first stage and I hear you, you were the fastest. I, uh, I, I see the same, I'm really happy. Um, I was not really confident during the race, but I do no mistake, and I think um, it's one part of the success. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's a long weekend, and just the beginning, and we have to be consistent all the day. Francois Bailey Maitre and Tracy Mosley kick off the weekend in style, whilst Jared Graves puts the disappointment of round two behind him, and Justin Leoff continues to impress. <laughs> Definitely you have to give full gas because all the other riders were so fast that when you don't give full gas, you are slow and you have to give the best for sure. After a respectable seventh in the first stage, series leader Lau puts himself out of contention with a puncture. Bailey Maitre goes into the GC lead as Justin Leov wins the stage. Ravenel's taken out of contention with a puncher as Mosley's dominance continues. Tracy, third stage of the day, third win, isn't it? Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't ask for a better day, really, to be fair. I think this was going to be a tough race. I knew, you know, it's Alpine, French guys ride this kind of stuff all the time. So I didn't expect to come here and take three wins today, that's for sure. I thought 
and would be uh, would be gunning for me this weekend after Scotland. So yeah, good start, but still, it's it's a brutal format, and it's only halfway, so a lot can happen. Okay, we have Alan Milway, GT uh, coach. Uh, what's happened to Martin? We saw him cross the line in a sort of bad mood. Yeah, he wasn't very happy. He, he punctured halfway down, and it's a long stage. What, 17 minutes for the fast guys? He's punctured halfway down, lost loads of air, tire stayed in the rim, and then the tire blew off the rim. So he's he's ripped the rear mech. He's he's trashed the wheel, and unfortunately, it means we've just we've got to. I'm just getting authorization now to change the rear wheel, but we've got a five-minute time penalty for that. But otherwise, he can't ride. There's no way the title will sit back on there. So, in terms of the overall weekend's done. But he'll, he's frustrated because what he was third overall before this stage. Yeah, it's one of the it's the nature of the sport, isn't it? I don't I don't know if you want a spare wheel or anything. I'm sure we can hook you up. Maybe. It's not good for us. So you're welcome to. So Damien, it uh, looks like it was a good run for you on this third stage. You're currently in fifth place. Yeah, the first stage uh, this morning, it's really good for me. And the uh, second stage, uh, big crash in the snow on the top of the stage. But uh, good, top 10. And uh, last stage, uh, very, very hard. It's uh, so long. Third on uh, the third stage of the day, but he might have had some uh, demons to exercise after the first run on that stage. Yeah, I had a... Uh Big over the bars before the uphill. Um, lost, you know, I'd lost 20 seconds when I was 20 seconds into the run on the first okay, one, and then the that run was going perfect. It got through the snow really good, and then hit something about maybe a third of the way down, and I had a slow leak, and so I was riding on about 10 psi for most of that run on the rear. So I was just pretty frustrating to see how close I am still to, to Justin's time, and I was just nannering down the bottom, just trying to keep air in the tyre. So. Despite the high rate of mechanicals, like and that's part of the game too. You've got to keep your bike in one piece, and I was just trying to ride too aggressive up top, so that's my fault, you know. So, but uh, it's really good riding. It's it's real. Like your heart rate's on max. You got arm pump. Your legs are burn up, and you're just plowing through rock gardens at 50k an hour. It's awesome. Yeah, that was <laughs> Rennie, you're looking out of breath. You put a lot into that run. Oh, it was amazing. For me now, I passed the snow without crashing like the last time. I was so happy and it's a nice stage. So Justin, joining you on the floor here, it looks like it's been a hard day, but a rewarding one. Two stage wins. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, to get, you know, I haven't had a stage win yet, and um, I've had lots of seconds. So, to get two today is is really cool, and um, you know, on such physical long stages, and I'm I'm really happy. And uh, sees you taking the overall lead as well going into tomorrow. That's got to feel good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's a little bit of a buffer, and I think tomorrow is going to be much of the same. Um, so you can never really look too much into it, but you know, I'll take it. Any advantage is good, and. Um, yeah, let's see if we can repeat tomorrow. Martin Mays' strong start is capsized with a puncher that sees him finish in 189th. Justin Leoff repeats his win on this track to go into the overall lead, and Rennie Wild Harbour's second place also moves him up into second overall. We've had an incredible first day here in Valois. The sun has been shining all day on the riders, and they've had some serious challenges. 17-minute stages, a whole load of punches, mechanicals, and the stages do really test these riders. There's the physical ability of it, you know, just how much their training's paying off, as well as the technical skill. There is some tricky sections up there. So going into day two, with the two Trek riders of Justin Leov and Tracy Mosley leading out the GC, it can only get more exciting. Day two, we're at the top of a second mountain that this event is using in the region. All three stages start from the same place today, and the riders are gathering under the hot sun of Valois.
Uh, see here, because we're in France, you're taking some uh, style tips on the helmet placement? Yeah, speed, uh, aero took. It's, it's looking good, man. Yeah, maximum visibility. Looks an incredible track. Have you just you've just had a sighting run? What can we expect on it? Uh, well, there's lots to catch you out basically the whole way down. So I think slow is hopefully fast, and hopefully not just slow. But I'll uh, yeah, just sort of try and find my way down nice and smooth. That's my aim this time. So where do you normally ride? What sort of terrain are you used to? Oh, I come from cross country and now I'm less physical than technical. <laughs> I keep pushing as hard as I can, but I'm more technical actually. Disappointing first day, Nico Lowe comes out fighting, winning stage five at the start of the second day of racing. It's also a strong start for Anne Caroline Chusson as he takes advantage of the first stage Tracy Mosley hasn't won. <laughs> I have the feeling I'm getting faster and faster every race, so I think it, ju it just takes time to get the hang of enduro, you know, you can't expect just to swap over in a year, you know, it's going to take me some time and uh, yeah, I'm getting closer, closer and closer to the top girls. It does remind me of the old downhill tracks a little bit, the sort of stuff you used to dominate on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's uh, like today the first stage is a little bit old downhill track. Yeah. Are you feeling at home on it then? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's okay, I mean I like, I prefer that than physical track, so. The GC chances are blown along with this tyre. Lowe continues to show his stage winning credentials, racking up another win, whilst young Frenchman Damien Otton moves up with his best stage result to date in second place. Graves moves into the GC lead, leaving it all to fight for from top three, only separated by four seconds. Congratulations, you've had a great weekend and absolutely stomped it. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't have asked for a better weekend. I didn't ex ex ever expect to come here and you know, and win most of the stages and be able to beat the, the French girls I thought would be super strong, on, especially Anne this weekend. So, yeah, really, yes, pretty damn happy.
So, Justin, you were leading until uh, got a puncher, eh? Oh, I mean, there's no, nothing worse than the sound of the air coming out of your tyre, and, like, I was in denial when I heard it. I was like, it can't have been. I can't have been. I was in a section that I didn't even think there were any rocks in, and uh, just crushed me, eh? I couldn't believe it. How does it feel stepping back up and stepping up into this level? Oh yeah, eleven in Chile, six in Scotland, and two here. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, there'll be a win on the card soon. I hope, yeah. Okay. It looked like there's so much to catch you out this weekend. A lot of people puncturing, and you're saying crashes as well. I mean, how hard were you pushing? Me, uh, it depended, uh, depended the feeling a little bit. Uh, on stage three yesterday, I pushed quite hard, but the feeling was so great. I had a good concentration and really enjoyed it. And there were a lot of uh, punctures. Yeah, like that last stage, you know, like going to the top four seconds between top three, all I could think was, you know, do you just have a safe run and get a top three? Or do you just, you know, go for it a bit and win? Because I was still in the lead, but um, yeah, I guess my, my plan was just, you know, take it as it comes, just come out of the gate and just let it all flow naturally. And that's the way I think you, you're either best. Having nothing to lose is puncher victims Leov and Lowe who lead it out, whilst Otto's pace puts him in third. Ravenel shows what could have been without that puncher. Despite not winning a single stage, Graves' calculated ride sees him take the overall win. Otto had a stunning weekend for second overall, and Rennie Wildhaber demonstrated his strengths when the mountains get big. Young Isabeau Corduria's consistent riding shows she's a force for the future with a fourth place behind an ever-improving Beerton. But it was Mosley's show this weekend as Anne-Caroline Chusson struggled on home soil. In the men's rankings, it is Antipodeans Jared Graves and Justin Leoff who are up top, whilst Damien Otto's strong ride at this third round pushes him into third overall. After coming into this third round equal at the top between Mosley and Shusaw, Mosley's win here has shifted her 50 points clear of Shusaw, while Cecile Ravenel comes in third, Annika Beert in fourth, and Isabeau Cordurier coming on a strong fifth. Trek Factory Racing continued to dominate the team rankings with a strong team of Rennie Wildhaber, Tracy Mosley and Justin Leov, whilst Rocky Mountain are keeping them honest and Canyon Factory Enduro team are giving chase in third. So that's it from the third round of the Enduro World Series from here in Valois, France. And what a weekend it's been. We've had the sun baking down on us all the time. You should see the cameraman, he's burnt to a crisp. But we've fully experienced the true savage beauty of the French Alps. It's incredible up there. The courses have been scintillating, but there's been a lot to catch the riders out. And we saw that particularly in the men's field. Four of the top contenders getting caught out with flat tyres. But it was Jared Graves who rode a very intelligent race, just below full peak power the whole way to take the win. And Tracy Mosley did the same in the women's category. So moving forward to La Twille in three weeks in Italy, we are looking set for an even more exciting series.